In this video, you're along for the ride with me as I try hands-free super cruise for the first time, and we'll be getting some help from one of Cadillac's engineers to answer the most popular web search questions about super cruise. I'm Justin Pritchard, this is the Cadillac Escalade, and in this video, we're going super cruising. My name is Philip Vicente. I am the technical lead for the DevOps team here at uh, CTC Markham, involved on the, uh, well, Super Cruise feature. The current program that I'm supporting is the Cadillac Lyric. And uh, I've been at GM for about three and a half years now. We'll hear more from Philip soon, but for now, let's meet the machinery. My tester is this diesel-powered Escalade, the machine that stole my Super Cruise virginity, as it were. And I'll show you a variety of new and upcoming Super Cruise models, including the Lyric, Hummer, EV, Bolt, EUV, Silverado, and more. But let's kick things off in the most Northern Ontario way possible with a 35 below cold start test of the Escalade's 3.0-liter Duramax straight-six engine. I haven't driven this in two days now, so it's been sitting parked average temperature 30 below, 34 degrees below right now. Let's see if it's going to start. Oh, it went. <laughs> Doesn't sound like it's too happy about it, but it started. With things warmed up and the Escalade smoothly sailing down this stretch of divided four lanes south of Sudbury, it was time to put Super Cruise into action. Does this freak you out just a bit? Because it freaks me out just a little bit too, this whole hands-free driving thing. I figure mostly that's because I've been instructed by dozens of professional driving and racing instructors over the years all around the world, and one of the first lessons they all try to hardwire into their students is that your hands belong at 9 and 3 at all times. I even remember one instructor yelling at me for keeping my hand on the gear shifter for too long. She said it's not going anywhere, get your hand back on the wheel, and I'll never forget that. The point is, I'm hardwired as a hands-on 9 and 3 sort of guy, and even though this is very weird to me, Super Cruise does make it very easy and very, very natural. I'll bet it's smoother than the average driver in a lot of situations. Partly, that's thanks to its ability to detect the car's position in space with incredible accuracy by comparing its position to a LiDAR-generated 3D map of the highway you're driving on. This additional information combines with tracking from onboard sensors and cameras that provide a pinpoint location at all times. And so it's this ability to compare its position to its surroundings that gives Super Cruise its superpower, the ability to give drivers extended periods of hands-free driving even for hours on end. Of course, this is fun and relaxing once you get used to it, which doesn't take long, but there's more to it than that. It's for everyone who loves to drive, right? And uh... One of the, the great things about this feature is that it allows commuters, people who live you know, long distances away from their, their place of work, um, or if you are traveling with your family, or traveling for business um, on a particularly long drive, uh, it's a pretty relaxing way for you to get there. So in my own experiences, uh, there have been a number of times where I've had the opportunity, you know, to, traveling for business uh, for GM, uh, been able to leverage uh, some of the vehicles in our fleet. And aside from the thrill of having um, technology take over the wheel and allow you to sit back and relax, like one of the things that I found, at least when I first started using it, from the consumer perspective, is how relaxed you actually are and how much work is actually involved in keeping a vehicle on the road. To help learn more about how this all works, let's answer some popular web search questions with Philip's help. Question 1. Is Super Cruise worth it? Well, that depends on how you'll use your Escalade, I think. It's great for highway touring, especially with the fuel-saving diesel engine equipped to my tester. That's a recipe for relaxed and efficient comfort at the wheel. Watching Super Cruise work also adds a further layer of high-tech appeal to the Escalade's cabin. So I think if you're someone interested in this sort of cutting-edge tech, and especially if you do a lot of commuting on highways, you'll find it enjoyable to use every day. It's incredible how much effort goes into actually driving a vehicle and, and, and keeping it on the road. And uh, not only do we allow our consumer to feel rested once they've completed their drive, um, there's also a safety aspect to it as well. Because you have... Uh, this feature active, you actually have a bit more situational awareness. You're keeping your eyes on the road. Uh, you're able to 
you know, keep your eyes on your mirrors. And um, so that was something that I also felt uh, using the vehicle. Question two, can Super Cruise be added after purchase? Nope, currently Super Cruise is optional and needs to be purchased with the vehicle. Question three, what cars have Super Cruise? Initially, it was introduced on the 2018 model year Cadillac CT6, and today an enhanced version of Super Cruise is available on the Cadillac CT5, CT4, Escalade, Lyric, and the GMC Hummer EV. It will also launch on the Sierra 1500 and Silverado 1500 later this year, and by the end of 2023, Super Cruise will be available on 22 vehicles. Question four, where can you use Super Cruise? Currently, there are about 320,000 kilometers of compatible divided highways in Canada and the US, and we can expect driver assist tech and the availability of compatible roadways to both grow in the near future, as GM works to enable hands-free driving in 95% of all driving scenarios, partly with the upcoming Ultra Cruise feature that we'll be covering in a different story. Question five, what Cadillac CT6 has Super Cruise? You'll find Super Cruise available from model year 2018 on Cadillac CT6 Premium Luxury, and it was standard on Platinum and Sport trim grades. Question six, how does Super Cruise work? We collect all this data about the, the roads. I believe there's over 300,000 kilometers worth of highway in North America and Canada that is mapped out using what we call a LiDAR technology. It collects all of this data about um, the different roads that we support here in North America. Um, and then we store it in a database. Um, and how SuperCruise works is using onboard sensors and cameras on the vehicle, as well as your GPS location, we corroborate the information from the sensors in the vehicle and compare it to this database of all these highways. And as a result, we're able to confirm things like the number of lanes that are on the road, that the current location that you're at. Uh, there are some unique situations where we are even able to get information on things like speed, well, speed signs, but more importantly, speed limits, um, so that the vehicle knows to stay within those bounds. And essentially, uh, using our, our ability to control the vehicle's speed and, and lateral control, we ensure that the vehicle stays within that lane. Um, and then, I touched a little bit about the sensor that we use to check that you're keeping your eyes on the road. Um, this is what allows us to, to know that you're not asleep or, or being distracted. Uh, this ensures that you're staying safe and using the feature appropriately and also able to take over. Uh, so this is what we're ensuring, that the passenger does keep their eyes on the road and be able to intervene if needed. Yeah, so there's a variety of sensors. So you touched on camera and, and radar. The particular use case for the camera and radar is more just to ensure that you have the correct distances between vehicles that are traveling in the same direction as you and on the highway. Um, but the sensor that we're using to compare against the database would be the GPS or GNSS data. Question seven, how do you use Super Cruise? Well, it's very easy if you're on a compatible highway and the road markings are visible. Just set your cruise control and then click this little button. The light turns green on the steering wheel and it's hands off. It would take you more time to call up the popcorn setting on your microwave. For a lane change, just tap the signal lever and Super Cruise completes it for you hands-free after vehicle sensors determine that the path is clear. And if the system needs the driver to take control, warnings are subtle but effective. A red light flashes on the steering wheel, there's a slight vibration through the seat, and an on-screen infographic requests that you take over. The system makes its point quickly, but it's not alarming. Question eight, what is Super Cruise in a fighter jet? Interesting question, and it turns out the term Super Cruise was first used in the world of aviation, which happens to be where Philip spent the first six years of his engineering career. But does Super Cruise mean the same thing in a fighter jet as it does in a Cadillac? And is the name intentionally the same? That similar name is is more of a coincidence. Uh, so as you may have found, I actually happen to have a background in the aviation industry. Um, that Super Cruise in the aviation context is more about uh, physical performance requirements for an aircraft. So supersonic cruise or cruising above the speed of sound. Uh, so it has no um, relation to autonomy or, or autonomous control of, of the aircraft at all. It's more about the engine's performance, uh, whereas Super Cruise, you know, is, as reported by General Motors for our vehicles, is 
an active safety system for for our drivers to use. So the, the name is is purely coincidence. I asked Philip to further explain how his background in aviation connects with his current job of designing next generation vehicle systems like Super Cruise. It's interesting you bring that up because um, there's a lot of parallels um, in both industries. I think, you know, in aviation, as well as our focus here at General Motors, safety is a huge consideration for us. Uh, we do a, we put a lot of effort in being very stringent on our software changes um, and ensuring that our consumers are not only enjoying or, or being um, um, thrilled by the content we can offer them, but that they can also enjoy these features safely. Um, in aviation, uh, particularly commercial aviation, where you have large numbers of passengers traveling every year, you know, safety is a big deal. We have those parallels. Maybe we don't have as many passengers inside each vehicle, but we put millions of vehicles out onto the road every year. Uh, so the concerns and the number of lives that um, that we need to consider in our decisions, uh, there's a lot of parallels there. Um, going more into even the feature level and the feature like Super Cruise, you know, we've had autopilot um, in aviation for quite a while now. And one of the advantages of having features like autopilot and auto throttle is to allow the pilot to keep their eye on how systems are functioning for the aircraft and be able to respond as needed. Um, some flights can take a considerable amount of time, take you know hours. And you could see those parallels with a feature like Super Cruise, where in a long drive, you still want to have the driver feel rested, rested sorry, and be able to react when needed um, in any situation, as well as to be able to feel comfortable once they get to their destination. So those are two areas that I think that having a background in aviation can help uh, inform your perspective on these things. So if I understand you correctly, you're, you're, it's two examples of using technology with the goal of reducing the driver's workload so they can focus more on what's, what's important to them. And ensuring safety. Right. Safety being the more important, obviously. Question nine is Super Cruise Level 3 Autonomous. So Super Cruise, um, we, to be clear, is a level two feature. So um, I did, I guess we didn't get into the details during this video, but uh, in the previous answers, we do require um, the vehicle, the operator of the vehicle to have their eyes on the road, right? And um, they are monitoring these systems. And we actually have um, a camera on the steering wheel column that is actually checking that the driver is paying attention to the road. Uh, so that's something very important to, to point out. It, it is not a autonomous feature, but it is an active safety feature that allows you to um, operate the vehicle more comfortably. And so therefore you do need to uh, keep your eyes not only on the road, but also on the operation of this feature. So that would sort of align with the SAE level two requirements for autonomy. It's busy times for people designing the next generation of driver assistance technology, and Philip Asante has an important piece of advice for young and aspiring engineers and engineering students who hope to pursue a path like his. From high school, um, I actually grew up uh, outside of Canada. I, I grew up in a country called Oman, and uh, what we had, I think that was equivalent to your grade 12, was it followed the British system. It was something we call the A-level. And uh, the subjects that I was studying uh, included math um, and another subject called further math <laughs> uh, just to emphasize on, on the amount of math that was involved. Um, you know, I, I was phys a physics uh, student as well, and I also studied chemistry. Um, and then this really helped me to get into my undergraduate degree program that I did at Carleton University. Uh, so I actually got into aerospace engineering as my um, my major in university. Um, now, what's really interesting is while I was there, uh, I had a great professor uh, who really got me interested in unmanned systems, which is you know, sub a subset of, of the aerospace industry. And at the end of the day, it's all about taking data from the world surrounding your device and using it to make decisions. Uh, so this is an area I got a lot of interest in. I participated in a number of student competitions, um, notably Unmanned Systems Canada. Now I bring that up just to sort of emphasize, there was my academic work, and then there was also this opportunity to do what we would consider extracurricular. 
I would strongly encourage people who would like to get into this space to look for those kind of opportunities and and uh, be able to experiment with this sort of technology. Uh, so, yeah, that after graduating from university, I got my first job in uh, aviation. Uh, I worked in aviation for about five years, and you know, I don't know how familiar you are with the aviation industry. Things don't move as fast as in uh, in the automotive industry, and I definitely saw, you know, reading about the company and and uh, the role that uh, I was offered here. You know, that's how I ended up in the automotive sector. It's a very, very exciting field, highly competitive, giving, you know, coming from aviation where you only have about three or four different competitors to a very, very competitive market uh, with different manufacturers and automotive. Uh, that's how I find myself here. Thank you for watching. My name's Justin Pritchard. Don't forget to hit that like button down below if you learned something new. And until next time, take care and drive safe.